<laughs> this would normally be a tough spot for a comedian. You've just followed <laughs> a, a crazy dog <laughs> climbing a tree. But for George Carlin, this presents no problem at all. He's one of the most inventive, funny guys in the business. And he's going to be performing at Caesars Lake Tahoe on the 28th and 29th of uh, this month. Would you welcome George Carlin. How are you doing tonight? Nice to see you all. Hello, doctor. And Johnny, I did it again. I went into the commissary. Uh, I ate the commissary. You know, I, the last time, what did I have? The last time was the... Uh, a breast of hyena, which was great. <laughs> this time, they've got a new little gourmet section. I don't know if you're aware, but it's a gourmet section, and the, uh, the maitre d' Ulrich was very nice. <laughs> he gave me a little of everything. I had a little... Uh, first, I had the rack of weasel. Very good. <laughs> a piping hot bowl of wolf noodle soup. <laughs> the loin of gopher was a little underdone. Uh, and then, of course, stir-fried mole. Curried woodpecker. And topped it all off with some nice uh, candied unicorn McNuggets. <laughs> so they got me now. I'm going to be a regular, uh, regular patron. Of course, I don't have to remind you, you've been told four or five times, and you probably knew this anyway from your date books. Tomorrow is Thanksgiving. And uh, I'm happy because it's, it's a day that you really understand that you're living in the 20th century, don't you? Because uh, turkeys all over America will baste themselves in ovens that will later clean themselves. <laughs> Now, we're not having turkey this year. We're, uh, we're a little tired of that. You get tired after a while, I think. We're, uh, we're having a seagull. <laughs> yeah. They're a little fishy, you know, but, but you don't have to add salt, which makes them great. We've, we've experimented before. Uh, one year we had a stork, which was... <laughs> kind of, that's kind of nice, but the wishbone made a hell of a noise. <laughs> And then a couple of years ago, we were experimenting. We had common street pigeon. Unfortunately, three of the guests did pass away. <laughs> so I'm, uh, I'm anxious to get going here into my usual subjects, my, my little uh, potpourri. I, I, I was a little bit late tonight. I'm sorry if uh, you know, I upset anybody here. I was, had an unusual incident in traffic. I either ran over a sheep <laughs> or I ran over a small man wearing a sheepskin coat. <laughs> And, I, and I'm not sure because I didn't stick around. <laughs> you know, I just kept moving. That's what you got to do, by the way. If you have an automobile accident and you run someone over, just get the hell out of there. <laughs> if you get out of your car, you're, all you're going to do is add to the confusion, you know? And they're going to want to know your name and your, your address and some wise guy, but you got any insurance, you know? So uh, what I do, just get the hell out of there because uh, you'll, all you do, like I say, they, they got enough troubles without you stopping, you know? <laughs> So, uh, head on out. Yeah. Look at it this way. Hey, it's none of your concern. <laughs> all right? That's all you got to remember. That's right. You mind your own business in life, and you'll be okay. Which brings me, it gets me philosophical. Though I, I, the wisest man, the wisest man I ever met, once told me something that I never forgot. And although I, I never forgot it, I never quite memorized it either. So, what I'm, I'm, uh, I'm kind of left with uh, having heard something that was really wise that I just can't remember, you know. <laughs> you know what you never see? A Japanese guy named Biff. <laughs> At least I don't recall him. <laughs> also, you never hear of cancer of the heart. I know that this is an... An, an unpleasant subject, but there's a lot of different kinds of cancer, and there's a lot of heart disease, and you never hear a cancer of the heart. One of those unusual things. Here's a fact that a lot of people haven't thought of. Don Ho. Don Ho can sign autographs 3.4 times faster than Ephraim Zimbalist Jr. You know that expression? The pen is mightier than the sword. I was thinking of that today. They ought to update that. Well, I think they did one time during the Second World War. The pen is mightier than the sword. I think because the typewriter is mightier than the machine gun. But I think it's time for uh, the word processor is mightier than the particle beam weapon. <laughs> Not all of these things are intended to be funny, by the way. <laughs> Some of these are more like you think about them and drive home. Um, let me ask you a question. 
if, if, if a real stupid person becomes senile, how do you know? I had kind of an unusual problem lately. I, I mixed up the phone numbers for the Schick Center for the Control of Smoking with the Evelyn Wood speed reading course. And I, now I've given up reading, but I can smoke a carton of cigarettes in 10 minutes. <laughs> you know, life, life is like the five and 10 cent store. You go in, you see something you want, you pay the clerk, they put it in the bag, and you take it home. That's another one of those ones that's not intended to be funny. <laughs> The sort of thing you want to think about later on. Hey, you know how you get rid of counterfeit money? Put it in the collection plate at church. <laughs> huh? Okay. I'd like to do my impression, because I don't do many impressions. I'd like to do my impression of Kirk Douglas and Walter Brennan combined. <laughs> okay. You know what I say? If the shoe fits, get another one just like it. <laughs> I'd like to leave you with something intelligent, but unfortunately, that's out of the question. Good night. Thank you very much.